All right, y'all, what's going on? Uh, finally, we are sitting here January 13th, um, about a month that Cyberpunk has been out. And uh, of course, you guys know everything that's been going on with it. We're not going to talk about all that. Uh, but CD, CDPR has finally come out with uh, at least someone that has uh, that's going to speak on it. And uh, apparently this guy's the co-founder. So uh, let's watch this quick video just got posted. Let, let's see what he's got to say. Hey, everyone. My name is Marcin Iwinski. I'm the co-founder of Project. What's up, Marcin? When I started the Project 25 years ago, one of its founding principles was honest and direct communication with gamers. When CD Projekt Red, the game development part of CD Projekt was born, it added something important to that principle, the ambition to make the best games in the world. It became our mission and something that guided us up until now. Based on that legacy of genuine and honest communication, you've trusted us and- I'm sorry guys, it still just flabbergasts me how they were working on this game for so long because when this game was originally announced several years ago ps5 and x new xbox weren't even announced they had pc they had ps4 they had xbox one uh so it's just like the way that they were just like fuck it we'll just do everything on pc and we'll just downgrade on console because that's exactly what they seem like they just thought was going to happen and obviously they either weren't able to do that or they were just sloppy, but um, it's just, just absolutely crazy. Uh, let's get back to it. Pre-ordered our game. And despite good reviews on PC, the console version of Cyberpunk 2077. I don't like that he says that. And despite good reviews on PC, like, it's still like he's trying to, they're trying to justify that... Um, I'm not, hold on, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Did not meet the quality standard we wanted it to meet. I and the entire leadership. Like, it's, uh, what I meant to really say is like, he, they tried, they snuck in a little jab there, right? Hey, we got, we got good reviews on, on PC. We got good reviews there, guys. But our console version, people just didn't find that up to snuff. Like, come on, bro. That PR madness. Ship team are deeply sorry for this, and this video is me publicly owning up to that. Please don't fault any of our teams for what happened. They Tell all us what are happened. incredibly talented and hardworking. Myself and and we know that's true, God. Like we know there's you know this is this was a huge team of people that worked on this game, right? And unfortunately, it was released when it was a little bit too early. I'd say if it had another year or two to it, it would have been pretty damn pretty damn good game um just without the bugs and everything like that of course i only i primarily play on pc uh but uh you know console players would have probably enjoyed it more they probably should have canned it for ps4 and xbox uh one by then but uh then they would have they would have gotten backlash for that too so um my thing is though there's a, a lot of people that worked on this game right and I guarantee you people, you know, some devs probably cried over this. Some devs uh, were probably extremely frustrated of this on this team. Some devs, I could imagine the, the boardroom meeting. I guarantee you somebody stood up. I had to because how this game, how this game was on original consoles, it would shock me that nobody stood up and said, hey, guys, this game isn't fucking ready. It's not ready. And I, we need to push this game back even further. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, we'll figure it out down the road. But I guarantee you guys, there's a lot of great people that work for CDPR. And I guarantee you they had those decisions. I guarantee they had those arguments. I guarantee there's tens of people that are sitting in that building right now. Like I fucking told you, we should have pushed this game back. We're going through a lot more stuff than we should have gone through now because of that. Um, I'm going to stop talking. Let's go. And the board are the final decision makers. And it was our call to release the game. Although, believe me, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back. Let's go back there. So they're taking the blame. The PR is taking the blame for it. Decision makers. And it was our call. Myself and the board were the decision makers. To release the game. Although, believe me, we never, ever intended for anything like this to happen. I assure you that we'll do our best to regain your trust. Now I'd like to tell you how the situation looked like from the inside. Okay, let's do it. Cyberpunk 2077 is huge in scope. 
And I'm not only talking about quests or things you see at first glance. I'm talking about a multitude of custom objects, interacting systems and mechanics. In the game, everything is not stretched out over flat terrain where we can make things less taxing hardware-wise, but condensed in one big city and in a relatively loading-free environment. Hey, on its own. Hey, I don't, sounds like excuses. CDPR, I'm starting to hear excuses. Okay, we get it. The game's fucking crazy. It's crazy to make. It took tons of people. You know, you had to bring in rocket scientists and you guys had to, you had to do a lot to get this game to look how it looked. And I'm sure the game looked a lot worse. Like, I'm sure the game looked a lot worse and you guys fixed it up and you guys did all kinds of tremendous work. There's all kinds of bugs we never saw. There's all kinds of crazy things we probably never saw. But at the end of the day, your final product is what's going to judge you and what's going to determine your 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 business and your campaign and, and all of that. And uh, you guys, it, it, unfortunately, it wasn't up to snuff. And you guys were the ones who were being the most cocky about it, at least the people advertising the game saying the game's going to come out when it's ready. We don't have a release date. We're not these other parties that are going to release a game when it's not ready. You know, you guys toted yourselves. You put your chest out. But you, put, you had all the hair, you had all the hamburger meat on the chest. And that's what you guys said. So you guys get fault on that. You know, I don't want to hear that the game is so crazy that, you know, we, we didn't know what we were getting into. And, you know, there's great open world games. There's great open world games. You know, there's great open world games with bugs. You know, that's the thing with Rockstar, guys. And the thing with Rockstar is Rockstar honestly spoils us, right? They have such a high level. They take their time. They're so underground. You don't hear anything about Rockstar. They're they're fucking they're right now they're banging out GTA 6. Like they're they're going through all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Their team is going ham on GTA 6 right now. We don't know anything about it though. They haven't said one word about it. They haven't talked about it. They haven't said stuff because the level of detail at Rockstar is crazy. And even Rockstar has some faults too. You guys remember Rockstar GTA Online did not work when the game first launched. If anybody who played GTA 5 on launch day, GTA Online did not work and they got it fixed. Um, so it's, you know, it depends on the situation of the game and of the character, but um, I don't want to hear excuses. I don't want to hear excuses. We get it. The game's crazy. The challenge, but we made it even more difficult for ourselves by wanting to make the game look epic on PCs and then adjusting it to consoles. Did I not just say that? <laughs> did I did I not just say that? They got to a point, probably two years in developing this game, where they were like, fuck it. We're just gonna work on this game on PC. And then we can just down we can just downscale it on consoles, guys. They, that's exactly what they did. They was like, fuck it. We're just going to work on this game on PC and then we'll downscale it later. And then realizing like, oh shit, we, there's some stuff we can't downscale. Especially old gems. That was our core assumption. And things did not look super difficult at first. We knew the hardware gap, yes. But ultimately, I think that time has proven that uh, we've underestimated the task. To give you a concrete example and the main culprit, we had to constantly improve our in-game streaming system for all-gen consoles. Streaming is responsible for feeding the engine with what you see on screen, as well as the game mechanics. And since the city is so packed and the disk bandwidth of all-gens is what it is, it constantly challenged us. Every change and improvement needed to be tested, and as it turned out, our testing did not show up. I like that he's going into detail and, and saying, hey, this is how we fucked up. This is what happened. And at the same time, it even, it shows like you guys knew the game wasn't ready and you released an unfinished product. It's, it's showing that, that that's even more clear now. A big part of the issues you experience while playing the game. As we got closer to the final release, we saw significant improvements each and every day. And we really believed we would deliver in the final day zero update. Now let's talk about the review process. We started sending our PC review keys in the first days of December. On launch day, December 10th, we hit the ground running with a really good start on PC. While not perfect, it's a version of Cyberpunk we are very proud of. At the same time, we're fighting for quality on all-gen consoles till the very last moment. And every extra day of us working on the day zero update brought visible improvement. 
This is why we started sending console review keys on the 8th of December, which was later than we originally planned. This all happened while working from home with all the challenges resulting from the COVID related COVID is a thing, yes. And it was a challenge for everybody. And, you know, COVID, it, it literally, it had a lot of people work from home. It made a lot of obstacles for everything. But I don't want to hear the COVID excuse, man. I really don't. I really don't. I mean, it, it happened. That's That's a fact. But you guys announced this game as gold during COVID. You guys pushed this game back during COVID. There's a lot of things you guys already did in advance for COVID and, and through the COVID era in early March and early April. And, you know, when everybody was already at home, when everybody had the demands and all that. Um, now, this could set back some time, of course, but, you know, it's. I don't, I don't, as much as I know it's a thing, I don't want to hear it as, as an excuse. You know what I mean? Like get the fucking job done get it out, push it back or, or whatever you need to do. Let's keep going. Restrictions. A lot of the dynamics we normally take for granted got lost over video calls or email. And we took that hit too. Now I'd like to tell you about our plans for the future and present a path for Cyberpunk 2077 on consoles and PC. We have already released three hotfixes improving the game, but that's just the beginning. Our ultimate goal is to fix the bugs and crashes gamers are experiencing across platforms. Please expect bigger and smaller patches on a regular basis. The first update will be dropping within 10 days, and it will be followed by another, more significant one in the following weeks. We will, of course, continue to work on the game in future updates and improvements beyond that. Our big plans for supporting Cyberpunk in the long term did not change. As for the free DLCs, our initial plan was to deliver them just after the release, much like we did with The Witcher 3. We decided to focus on the most important... Okay, so here we go here, guys. We got a ground map. Um, let's actually hear what he has to say first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the map as well. Fixes and updates first, and we'll be releasing the DLCs afterwards. Expect more information in the upcoming months. For those of you playing on next-gen consoles in back compatibility, you can still expect the free next-gen update for Xbox Series consoles and PlayStation 5 arriving in 2021. We are aiming at the second half of the year. I'd like to end this video. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at this map now. All right, so we have the hotfixes that we've already seen uh, done. 1.4, 1.04, 1.05, 1.06. Um... Uh, 1.1 is going to be a big patch. I'm sure they're going to patch a lot of the... the. Uh, I mean, the thing is, like, they need to fix the game, right? So I'm sure a lot more work is going to be done on console, of course, than will be on PCs for our PC players. Um, but I'm sure they're going to fix some things like some of the, the big glitches and, uh, you know, the, the money exploits, the inventory item exploits, the street cred exploits. They're probably going to get rid of those finally by 1.1 um 1.2 uh we'll we'll see what happens there but i'm expecting that 1.1 patch is going to be a lot of stuff pertaining consoles a lot of stuff pertaining consoles i think probably pc will probably will probably get put on the back burner just because the pc version is better is the best version of the game uh so probably 1.2 i expect us to see uh more things but who knows uh we'll see uh free dlcs like witcher so they do plan on uh, adding free dlcs a next gen console update for the console players um okay so pretty simple roadmap there uh we'll see what they do back compatibility you can still expect the free next gen update for xbox series consoles and playstation 5 arriving in 2021 we are aiming at the second half of the year. I'd like to end this video by assuring you that we treat this entire situation very seriously and are working hard to make it right. The guiding principles of our company are still core to what we do. We still want to make amazing games and have an open communication with you, our players. For now, our immediate focus is to work hard on making sure you enjoy Cyberpunk 2077 regardless of platform. Beyond Cyberpunk, we have many plans for the future which we'll share more about when we're ready. Which are four. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. All right, so there we have it. Um, okay. Watches on a regular basis, the long term. All right, guys, so there we have it. He talked about it. 
Um, you guys heard my thoughts about it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let's talk about it. Let's chat it up. Um, also follow the channel if you want to see more gaming related things. I'll follow the Twitter. My Twitter is primarily a cyberpunk Photoshop uh, gallery. So if you guys are interested in photos and uh, stuff for cyberpunk, follow the Twitter. I'll have that in the link below. All right, guys, take it easy and I'll see you around. Peace.